Good evening, everybody. All right. Uh, let's see. Hope everybody's having a good evening. I hope you wore your best. Uh, I'm sure most of you are in Steeler shirts tonight. All right. The reason that there was really no panic or even concern, or there shouldn't have been any panic or concern, with the market selling off heavy today on the open, was because of this. I mean, we're going to have pullbacks in an up market. But this told us there had been a definite change of investor sentiment, and as long as we stayed above the T-line, there was really anything to be concerned about. And as we can see, I was suspected we were going to close near the high end of the trading range today, meaning up here near the open. But as you can see, there was still more buying. Now, the one thing we have to be careful of is uh, – Everybody's buying in anticipation of a, an agreement between the, uh, uh, the red and the blue idiots. Um, what we have to be careful of is when the agreement is reached that there's going to be some profit taking. So, uh, plan accordingly. All right. So the, uh, Dow was, uh, fairly strong today. The NASDAQ was strong today. And we're just about at the breakout level which means if they break out through here, our next target is right up here on the top of the trend line. And why would we get there is because we had a kicker-type signal gap up off the 50, keeping us in this trend channel. So is this what everybody is watching? Probably. But more importantly is the message that we got right here was that they weren't taking it down. They were taking it back up. And so this message tells us, they're probably going to come back up to the top of the trend channel. Uh, let's see. I forget what the Russell is over here. Uh, yes, yeah, so it looks like the Russell did close up above the recent highs. Again, off that kicker-type signal. And then the S&P 500 also opened lower right on the 200 and then immediately started taking it back up. So that was this is the benefit we have with – with candlestick, uh, the visual aspects of candlesticks, is that once it opened, we could start seeing green, which told us immediately they weren't selling it after it opened. They were buying after it was open. So we knew right away they weren't selling this market off. They just opened it lower, and it was going to start moving back up. Uh, Robert, yes, these are uh, daily charts. <clears throat> now, what you can also do is even on the daily charts, uh, let's see, I'm going to use the Dow as a better example, that once we see that we're in an uptrend and they've pulled it back, that's where we're going to do a session here uh, pretty soon on how to use the intraday charts to verify what the daily chart is doing. So here's the uh, five-minute. We want the ten-minute chart. Ten-minute chart came down. And then it was for about the next hour and a half, it still traded below the T-line. Then once it came back up above the T-line, you can see what the result was. They were staying above the T-line right up into the, uh, the close. So when I see a big pullback like this, and then you start seeing buying and it's supporting in here, and your daily chart is already in an uptrend, this is pretty good evidence that they aren't selling this off. Now, had they gotten up here and started taking it back down? All right, there's, there was still more selling going on. But the fact that we could start seeing them bring it back up above the T-line on the 10-minute chart just gave us that much more uh, evidence that this whole package here, this whole big signal, told us more than likely we're going to be heading back in this direction. Okay, let's see what else we got out there. Gold. Ooh, what's all these things? Yeah. Gold is still back in this slow downtrend. And as you can see, as long as you stay below the T-line, you're not going anywhere in any big hurry. 
So maybe you have a head and shoulders type uh, pattern here, which means you're still going to be in a downtrend. Are there any benefits for using candlesticks on the E-minis versus uh, rather than the SPY? Um, the E-minis are usually going to move a lot faster, obviously. The SPY is going to give you a much slower, steadier uh, price move. And, they're, yeah, the E-minis make me move a little faster because uh, they're more liquid and they're going to be the uh, – uh, buying a unit of the S&P, I think, is like 25 grand, whereas you're trading buying the E-mini, you're uh, you're only what, using five grand or so. Let's see, silver still in a slow down trend. The dollar having a hard time getting up through the uh, the moving averages here. That's probably still heading down. Let's see what the Japanese yen looks like. Now the Japanese yen isn't very strong either. So the Dow's not, or the dollar's not strong. What is strong? British pound, that looks like it's still uh, moving in an uptrend. And what's the euro doing? Euro's still in a steady uptrend. Uh, let's see, gold, silver, uh, interest rates. Oh, uh, looks like, uh, yeah, it's not anything real. Real devastating. They hit a low here recently and not heading up, but might not be heading down with any great speed either. Oh, let's see. Cattle still moving up nicely. I think lean and hogs are, uh, they're moving. Yeah, you know, sideways to down. And soybeans still can't get up above the T line. Came up a little bit today, but not anything that told us there was any. They might be bottoming right here, but it looks like they've opened a little bit lower after after hours. Wheat. Whoops. Wheat kind of flattening out also, but as you can see, they've broken this downtrend. They're still basically in an uptrend until they can close back below the T-line. Okay, what am I forgetting? Uh, dollar. Can't think of anything right now. All right. So the, with the Dow still heading up, even when it traded off hard this morning, the uh, – uh, some of the uh, patterns were still working. Like our recommendation on MTDR had a scoop type pattern with a morning star signal, a close above the T line, and if it traded positive, it was breaking out through the scoop handle, which which we did. Uh, nice looking chart. Same scenario for BAS. Another nice little scoop pattern, left right combo. If this one trades positive, look for a. Uh, Slingshot effect. I say slingshot effect because coming out of a scoop pattern, you usually get a fairly fairly strong move. Okay, I forgot a few. Sugar. Sugar is nice, steady uptrend. Uh, use the T-line as your stop on this one. And coffee. Coffee looks like it's trying to bottom, but I wouldn't be buying it until it does get up above the 50. Because as you can see, the 50 has been acting as a resistance level all the way down. And natural gas, natural gas trying to come back up toward the 200-day moving average. But I would be suspicious that once we got to the 200, your stochastics will be in the overbought area. They have to break through the second time to tell us that, uh, that it's going higher. And in this case, they might do it because you've got a gap up, gap up. Um, that force right there might be enough to push it through the second time. Oh, crude oil, that's the one I forgot. I knew there was something out there. Crude oil just isn't going anywhere. Uh, it's still stuck below the T-line. And feeder cattle, there's snowstorm in, uh, let's see, what is feeder cattle? Is it X? Uh, feeder cattle after or down after hours. So, so there was your hanging man, doji. Lower open after hours, that means they're probably bringing it back to the T-line. 
Okay, back to uh, stocks. Uh, uh, some of the ones that we've been watching here recently, GGAL has a perfect J-hook pattern set up. Uh, when it broke out through this level, told us that if this is wave one, wave three is going to be in progress. CLNT, again, this is a smaller price stock, but notice the rounding bottom here. It's got the chance to spike back up, and the longer-term chart on this one, is this big wedge formation that if they break out into this territory, first of all, you might see it spike right back up here to the uh, 775 level. Then if it breaks out from there, I'm pretty sure the long-term chart looks like that. You might have a lot of running room to the upside with this kind of a basing in here. So just something to keep an eye on. Uh, as long as the uh, the short-term chart stays good, the long-term prospects of this might be a uh, uh, might be good. Uh, Nettie, can somebody help Nettie? I just read about it. Hundred thousand cattle dead. Sheesh. Uh, yes. Uh, on CONT, small cap China stock, you still have to go with what the charts are telling you. Um, no matter what, what it's from. All right. Let's see. Okay. Nettie, somebody's, uh, Jim's helping you out there. What else we got? Oh, we've also been holding on to TPLM. Uh, Whoops. I do this one, T P L M S dot T P L M. There we go. Fry pan bottom, J hook pattern. If this breaks out in the new high territory, I would suspect you've got another four or five points to the upside. And, uh, okay, look, let's go down a few that uh, look good right now. CSIQ, same scenario. J-hook pattern. There's your left-right combo that broke out through this level. Would suspect more upside. Uh, GGB is one that we recommended not too long ago because it broke out through this level. So now you've got a wave one, wave two, going into wave three. This could take you up into the uh, about the seven or the uh, nine nine fifty area pretty quick. Um, Yang. Young uh, got a good-looking chart. He did a doji today. Makes this very simple. If it opens positive tomorrow, it's still coming out of this uh, little rounding bottom. Uh, expect some more upside on this one. And uh, TCL, one of the solars. Oops, S -T -T -S -L, not TCL. Another. Stepstone, wave one, wave two, wave three. Wave one, wave two, going into wave three. Uh, this should have some more upside to it. And uh, CSUN. Notice the fry pan bottom, the big breakout, the pullback. Still above the T-line. This one you want to be buying. Notice the little wedge formation. If they break this out to the upside of the wedge, that J-hook pattern is going to get moving. You could probably get another uh, three, four points on this one very quickly. And uh, now, this is the advantage of having uh, many eyes looking for the same type of chart patterns. I think it was David L. or was a car tech this morning said they were buying uh, FU, and I looked at the chart. Saw that you had doji, doji, left-right combo, gap up through the T-line. So we started buying it right in here because the worst-case scenario is we're going to close it back out if it came back down below the T-line. So do you always get a good price move like this? Definitely not, but you get put in positions where the probabilities are in your favor that you're moving in the right direction. Where's the first target? There's a little three-cent gap right here. Uh, if it moved up there, that's going to be a good... Uh, 20% move to that level. And uh, KNDI was another one that's been talked about in the chat room. This one's doing a nice uh, reversal. 
Uh, this one I wouldn't be afraid to be buying. Again, your fry pan bottom, your slow curve breakout, pull back. Notice when it got back into this area, it was indecisive trading. Now they're taking it back up. Why do we expect them to take it back up? Because there was a strong buying force here. There was profit taking. And now with the profit taking over, that strong buying force probably goes, kicks back in again. And you're going to go ahead much higher. F-I-L-R. Notice the fry pan bottom on this one. I wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one going into this level because if it breaks through this level right here, which you're not that far away, and notice you've got a hammer type signal to use the T-line as support. If it opens positive tomorrow, I wouldn't be afraid to be buying it. If it gaps up tomorrow, definitely would not be afraid to buy it because if they're gapping it up, knowing that the uh, next resistance level is right here, that means they don't give a hoot. They're going higher with it, and it's probably going to break through that level. Uh, Jay, you're going to have uh, I don't know what the previous one was. What was the previous one? Oh. K-N-D-I. Yes, that's a J-hook type pattern. And AT. Okay, there's that uh, that fry pan bottom. Cup and handle, doji. If it opens positive tomorrow, what are they doing? They're going to move it positive. They're going to do a doji sandwich. If they do a doji sandwich and close it up here, they're breaking out through any uh, resistance level. You're going to be in a strong uptrend. FNSR always seems to have good chart patterns. But as you can see on the longer term move here, This one came out of the fry pan bottom. Notice where it broke out right about the beginning of the fry pan bottom. And what do you have after that? A 45 degree. Now what do you have? Another little fry pan bottom just about ready to break out in the new territory. So where's the suspected target? Well, if you can draw a line right through the tops up here, you could probably have a good strong move back up to that level and then go back into your 45 degree. Uh, same type of, uh, Chart pattern on, uh, well, that was the result of the fry pan bottom uh, coming out. And as soon as it broke out through this level, just stronger than bear's breast. So that's why the patterns are much, much more beneficial to be sticking money in because they're not going to be influenced by which direction the market is going. They're going to be more influenced by what is building up in that pattern. Uh, another J-hook pattern setting up. This one I would not be afraid at all to be buying on a positive open tomorrow with the expectation that if they break through this level, you've got wave one, wave two, going into wave three. Click has been strong. It came out of this little gap up through the resistance level, through the wedge, and it just took off like a rocket. So this is why we want to see when they Pressure's built up. If you can draw a line right down through this level, and they breach that level, and you can see there's basically a wedge formation. Let me see if I can do this more clearly. Whoops. And basically, you have that wedge setting up. When they break out through that wedge, that means everybody who's been building up, not knowing whether to buy or sell, when they break through here, they're all jumping in. We did C-O-N-T, N-B-G, got to make this one bigger, a little gap up, notice your little rounding bottom, I'm going to make this bigger yet, Jeez. a little rounding bottom, gap up, Notice a doji gap up through the resistance level. Nice big pop. Now you've pulled back. Now it's turned you around. A little kicker signal bouncing up off the uh, T-line. This one I wouldn't be afraid to be buying with the expectation you're heading for this target up here. And, okay, thank you, John. Let's see, NQ, S dot, NQ. Observe the obvious. Where did this stop 
pulling back right smack dab on the 50 with a bullish Harami, Doji Harami. And remember, anytime you have a Doji in a multiple day pattern, it's going to usually act as more convincing. There's a change of investor sentiment. This one, I would not be afraid to be buying on a positive open tomorrow, telling you they're breaking out through this level. What's that make your target? Probably up here somewhere. But uh, they're going to bring it right back up into this level. And AMCC, there's your flutter kicker signal, breaking out into new high territory. I would suspect this one could possibly head for this level, which means there's some good upside potential now they've broken out through this congestion area. Uh, sound in and out. Maybe it's just me hemming and hawing. DYAX, uh, yeah, you might want to log off and log back on and get a better connection. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your J-hook pattern. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one again on positive trading uh, tomorrow. Uh, wage was another one that was brought up in the chat room today. Another J-hook type pattern, scoop type pattern, breaking out through this downtrending channel, morning star signal, left, right, or I'm sorry, a doji sandwich uh, confirmation. I wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one with the anticipation that your upside potential is up in this area. So um, remember, this looks like a long distance up here, but this looked like a long distance up here. And then this looked like a long distance up here. We're still in an uptrend, and it's in a trend channel, so this this can be a, a good uh, good profitable trade. GAS, I think this is the one. Do I got this right? For some reason, this came up, and there must have been a reason for this, and I don't know what it is, except we got an inverted hammer. Uh, oh, I think this one had on the other chart had shown it open here, closed here, kind of a belt hold, which means you definitely want to be buying on a positive open tomorrow. And UN, U, UBNT, there's your fry pan bottom, and you've just now gotten to the breakout area. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one. Why am I not afraid to buy them when they're reaching a new territory? Because if they're coming out of a pattern, that means investor sentiment is building up and they're ready to, to break it out to the upside. And UBNT, we were kind of discussing this one. Oh, that was UBNT. Uh, discussing this one in the uh, chat room today, um, that this was now breaking out into new territory. So if this is wave one, fry pan bottom wave two, wave three could have a good hefty move to it, meaning going from 22 to 36, 14 points, 14 points from here would take you up into the $50 area. And uh, let's see, CLDX had a nice pattern to it and failed, came right down to the 50. I mean, this is kind of, once again, observe the obvious that right here on the 50, they had a bullish Harami telling you the selling had stopped. Next day they did a hammer. Now they've done a left-right combo. And where are they doing off of? Right smack dab off the 50. So this tells me if it opens positive tomorrow, I want to be a buyer, just anticipating that we're going to get through this, uh, the T-line. This could have a nice strong move back up into kind of the top of the trend channel. And things like JCOM. Fry pan bottom, notice the morning star signal, smack dab on the 50, and they've broken out through this level. This pretty much tells me if this is wave one, wave two is consolidated. Where are they going to take wave three? You draw a line right up through here. They're going to come back up to where the trajectory of the trend channel was. That means there's a good possibility of a strong run right in here. And REX. X, also, morning star signal, 
doji gap up off the 50. If they break out through this level, that means you're going to have a good strong one. And where does the breakout usually occur? When you have that doji gap up, especially off a major support level. All right, so right now with these markets, we just have to assume that everybody's going to continue buying until they see it come up to the, uh, the next uh, resistance level. At that point, we see whether it's going to go through or not. If not, we're going to see a sell signal right here. You start taking profits and then anticipate they're going to bring it down one more time down to the bottom of the channel. <clears throat> so this is the exact reason why I, even though there's some good long-term picks out there, the, uh, the buy and hold for a year, two years, whatever, is not the prudent uh, strategy anymore. Um, because the markets are so, uh, uh, what do I want to say, reactionary to support and resistance levels that everybody now can participate in, where it used to be that you didn't have any charts to follow uh, prior to the Internet, that the, uh, the uh, buy and hold doesn't do you any good if it starts turning around here and you've got another month and a half of a downtrending market. Uh, you're not going to be making any money on the uh, long side. So. Uh, with that, I guess that's about all we've got for tonight. Other than the fact that, uh, for you new folks, we will be doing, uh, some, I think on the, uh, oh, tomorrow night we're going to be doing, uh, how to use the moving averages. Uh, and that's the basics, the 50, the, uh, or the 200, the 50, the 20, and the T line. Uh, I will be setting up Pretty soon, uh, based upon the requests of how to use the, oh, uh, not yet on the uh, stock picks. You're going to have to and try to keep them to one or two so we can get everybody in. Uh, when I tell Jim to do the double line, that's when you uh, you put in your stock picks. So uh, uh, now, what was I saying? Oh, new members. So we will be doing uh, training sessions uh, on the moving averages, I guess, tomorrow night. Then in the very near future, we're going to be showing how we use the uh, the uh, uh, the T line and the three T, and how we use intraday charts to tell us when it's time to take profits on positions that are really stretched out, and or how to get into positions early based upon knowing which direction a trend is going and uh, hitting a pullback. Uh, same time, same place, Tom. Uh, uh, Change computers, no sound and no charts. Oh, wow, Sharon, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, yes, so all, all of the classes we do will be recorded by our good recorder, Jim Cooper. Up on the date on the T, or, uh, think or swim scanning, uh, think or swim. We're still, you know, that think or, is that think or swim or uh, trade station? I'm sorry, trade station. Uh, I don't know what's happened to that. I signed all the forms for them a few months back, and we said in September we would do a project. Uh, I'll have to see what Pat is doing with that. Sorry about that. Yes, tonight session is recorded. Uh, when may we expect the T-line intraday trades? Probably within the next seven to ten days. I'm going to put together a whole uh, PowerPoint uh, uh, program. All right. Okay. So, all right. So are there any general questions on candlesticks? Okay, we will do that on um, gap ups. Uh, all right, I guess uh, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 7.1 seconds, do the second double line. Let's see, we did GGB. This one, all you can do right now is, is knowing that you're in wave three is hold. 
with the expectation you're going to have the same magnitude move as this right here. Um, C, Y, T, K. Did I do that right? Okay. C, Y, T, K. This is a nice looking chart. Now, it consolidated today. But if it opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying immediately because you've already had the kicker signal. Now you're having the doji consolidation, but if it opens positive, it tells you the bulls are winning. Uh, you want to be buying at that time. Late watchers, this one you continue to own. Notice the doji gap up. Uh, notice the breakout now through this level. More than likely, you can get up to the 200-day moving average, which kind of coincide with the bottoms over here. Okay, we'll, we'll be doing a stop loss uh, here. Uh, the short-term schedule is that I'm still moving two houses out of Houston into uh, Pittsburgh. So after the 2nd or 3rd of November, hopefully we'll be all settled in and we'll get back to doing uh, – trainings about once a week, and we'll probably do a couple of Saturday trainings on some of the bigger stuff like option training and uh, that sort of thing. A and F, stay short if you're short, um, but now you've got another doji set up, which means if they open positive and they come up through the T-line, you close out your short position. If they uh, open lower and start trading down, you can still be shorting the stock. EXTR, uh, stay long. You're in wave three. This is the classic fry pan bottom, strong price move, J hook pullback, inverted hammer, bullish confirmation. Anytime you see an inverted hammer with a bullish confirmation, you probably have about a 95% or greater chance that you're going to be moving higher. And if this case is moving higher, then you're in the J hook, which will be the same magnitude as that one. PLX, whoops, uh, this one with the gap up, that gave you a little bit of a message. However, you got to wait to see when the profit taking over is over from the gap up. So as soon as you start seeing a bullish candle, you can start buying. AMAP, uh, this one, if it opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying instantly. Because that would pretty much tell you that you're moving out through this direct, or out through this level uh, on a doji sandwich. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one on positive trading. RSOL. Uh, you can see the little rounding bottom. This one, uh, I don't know what the volume is, but it better be hefty. You can be buying this on positive trading. And uh, FTNT. Stay long as long as this stays above, above the T-line, which it's been doing here the last couple of days. Uh, uh, if this opens positive, they're going to take it up to the top of the trend channel, which will give you a good, uh, good move. Uh, VTUS backed off, but it came back up today. If this opens positive, you're still in this trend channel. Look for your next price move up into this area. And this one, I'm looking at the longer-term chart. Well, you're basically coming out of this fry pan bottom. You're seeing the whipsaw, which is not unusual coming out of a fry pan bottom. But the longer term chart has lots of big room up here that if they get this one moving, you could be back up into the 11 or $12 area. And I'm sure uh, this is probably going to be, if, if it does that, it's going to be based on some sort of a announcement. But apparently the announcement or something's putting people back into the stock. So there's apparently something coming down the road. Not that I know that for a fact. It's just the assumption is there's something coming down the road because people were uh, setting up a fry pan bottom. R-E-S, stay long on this one. There's your fry pan bottom. You're still in a fry pan bottom breakout situation. Nally. Uh, not going to be moving with any great speed one way or the other, but still paying a very good dividend. And Bank of America. 
Uh, this one you can be buying on positive trading. Notice the left-right combo that closed just above the 50 today. Stochastic's coming up. A positive open would take you back up above the 50, giving you kind of this scoop-type pattern, which means you're probably going to see more upside. Ford, stay long as long as this stays above the T-line right now. Notice the gap up to get, get back up there. H, I, M, X. Uh, came back up. You can stay long in this one as long as it doesn't close below the T-line right now. But you definitely want to see this break out above this level so you're not caught in a little head and shoulders type uh, setup. Uh, but I would suspect, uh, well, can't say that. It needs to open positive tomorrow to kind of confirm that. Facebook is getting soggy. Well, it was getting soggy. It closed back up above the T-line. you still got the potential J-hook pattern in progress. And we did our OSL, MNKD. Uh, this has the scoop pattern set up. You've got the doji here today. A positive open would bring you back up to this level. Once it gets up here, then you see whether they break out through the handle. If you do, you've got some good, uh, uh, good, uh, what do I say, slingshot effect coming out the other side. STRI. Uh, this one, if it opens positive, you can be buying. Just make sure your volume's good on the $2 stocks. Uh, Halo, uh, left-right combo, a positive open, breaks you through this level. Uh, wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one. There's your fry pan bottom, wave one, J-hook pattern. I get ready to buy on positive trading. And CVX. Oh. We're not running into one of these hiccups. First solar. Oh, okay. CVX did come up. Um, you're above the uh, T line. Uh, yeah, you probably got enough here to tell you that there's been a reversal. If you're buying this one, you hang on to it as long as it stays above the T line. Uh, FSLR. Oh boy. All right. Fry pan bottom, cup and handle. Buy out this one on positive trading would be breaking out through this level. And Goog. Well, 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 well. Why would this thing do this? Uh, uh, Google also in the throes of breaking out through this downtrending channel. You've got the doji gap up. Now if they get through the 50 and the 20, Basically, breaking through this downtrending channel, that means you're you're now in a wave three. Uh, let's see, options. Yeah, options we'll be working on uh, uh, over the next couple of weeks. We'll be starting uh, that program. Meaning, in the next couple of weeks, we'll already be in progress. Cisco, you can be buying this one if it stays above the T line. Also, if it breaks this downtrending channel. Uh, C-E-R-E. -E. That's a good fry pan bottom. This one you can definitely be buying on a positive open tomorrow. Use the T-line as your stop. H-Z-N-P. Stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Krispy Kreme. Uh, this one has to open positive tomorrow. If it opens lower, I'd close out the position and wait for another buy signal. As you can see, it's rolling over, uh, and today's doji hammer tape signal basically tells you what they're going to do based upon how they open it tomorrow. And BIIB. 
kicker signal, left right combo. I uh, wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one on positive trading. Scotty, Scotty, stay long. I'd use the uh, halfway point of this candle as my stop. I would want to see it open and come that direction. Try to waffle at best and then come back up through the uh, close of uh, Friday. Let's see. I'm guessing, Ed, that was MTGR. Yeah, this one you stay long with the anticipation that uh, you have wave one, wave two going into wave three. looks kind of like a double bottom, but here's the important part. A morning star signal with a close above the T-line coming up off the 50. Let's see. Evol. Uh, nothing can do, do here except stay long. And H E E S. This one you can be buying. This uh, looks like a I shouldn't say that. It looks like a low volume stock, but this one you can be buying on positive trading after the gap up uh, the other day. And C G I X. Left right combo. Another one you can buy. A kind of a mini scoop uh, pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading. Uh, ALJ, we recommended this one because of also the scoop pattern. There's also the scoop pattern. There we go. Morning star signal starting back up. I'd look for the first target to be here. If they break through the 50, they've got some good running room. And BLOX. Uh, bullish Harami bounced just off the 50. Gap up, doji sandwich, another doji. If they open this positive, you want to be buying, because that tells you with another doji sandwich, you're going to get through this level, uh, putting you into the next wave. And B O F I. Another scoop type pattern. Uh, wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one on positive trading. Just use the T-line as your stop. Uh, R-E-G-N. Another uh, J-hook pattern set up. Notice where the tail, the uh, this hammer-type signal took you to. Right smack dab to the 50. Now you've got a left-right combo. A positive open tells you the uh, T-line is not going to act as resistance anymore. And V-I-S-N. Oh, man. These are the type you'd like to have caught down here on the slow curve breakout. Uh, all you can do here is stay long. At this point, I'd be watching for the first signs of selling, taking a profit. If you got in down here somewhere, uh, that's a good profit trade. But likely, you wouldn't have known until it broke out. But once they break out of these flat, indecisive trading, pretty much tells you, but there's a new dynamic in that stock, and that's where you want to start uh, getting in. And after this big indecisive trading, you've got lots of uh, upside potential for this one. Now, how do I get back to where we can see it again? Uh, Boston Scientific. Stay long. M D G N That's a nice J hook pattern setup. I'm pretty sure if you put a Fibonacci number to this, starting from right here, up to right here, and you're right near the fifty. If you started it from here. Up to here. They're okay, still right in that 50% uh, retracement. And uh, let's see, that was, where are we? Okay, I don't know what the volume is on this one.
68,000. Uh, six dollar stock. Yeah, that's a little bit light. Way light. Whoops. Okay. Yeah, volume on that one's uh, pretty bad. Whoops. DQ. Well, this is a fine howdy do. Nice J hook. Notice a doji gap up. Right pin bottom. J hook pattern. You're going higher on this one. And Joseph A. Banks. Notice the uh, kicker type breakout. Uh, stay long until you see a sell signal. At this point, I'd have my sell stop right here at today's open. If it came back down through there, there's trouble, uh, or at least you can profit tape. Ford, we did. Uh, potash. Let's see. P O T. Potash came back right to the 50. Uh, I wouldn't be buying this one because I would suspect here's my trend right now, a little bit sideways. I'd want something with more up, upside potential. TIBX, another one that's in a nice trending up uptrend. Uh, you wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one tomorrow. Our ruckus. Ruckus broke out through this level. Morning star signal. Anytime you see a morning star signal at the end of a flat trading, it's going to create that little mini scoop slingshot effect to the upside. And TiVo. A nice little J-hook pattern setting up. I wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one. Now, when you see the trajectory like this, and then you see a reversal, usually the trajectory is going to be a lot faster because the profit taking is over, and everybody's still saying it's an uptrend. They start coming into a little, a little bit faster. Going from the, or by the old adage, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So they're probably going to be more coming in. HIMX, we did. Costco. Costco's going to the top of the wedge channel. You can stay long until it hits up in this area and then see what you want to do. But this is a very strong reversal, a big, huge belt hold, bullish engulfing signal. Basically tells you there's definitely a change of investor sentiment. Doji gap up off the uh, 50 on uh, AIG. I would suspect it's going to the top of the trend channel. Just watch what it does once it gets up there. Slumburger. This one you stay long. That was the kicker signal to turn this one around. Let's see. EXPE. Uh, this one you can stay short. If this opens week of tomorrow, continue to go short on it. And when the overall market shows a reversal signal, get out of stocks whether or not they show reversal themselves. When the overall market shows a reversal signal, get out of stocks whether or not they show a reversal themselves. No. If you see the market turning over and I mean, expecting there might be some profit taking once they announce there is a uh, an agreement to raise the uh, spending, etc. After a strong move, with this anticipating they were heading for that, I wouldn't be surprised to see some profit taking. Probably not anything more than a J hook pattern setup, but. Uh, and my over what is today? Monday. They probably will put off the decision until the last few minutes of Thursday, which means there might still be time to get back up to the top of the trend channel before then. IBN S dot I B N. Uh, stay long on this one, as you can see. This 50 supported after being breached. Makes this the next target. Did we do MasterCard? MasterCard's got a nice chart to it. You can be buying this one. That's not what we want. That's got milk. Uh, bounced right off the 50. Doji gap up. 
I would suspect this coming to the top of the trend channel. And dang, dang, sold off early, but came right back before the end of the day. This one you want to be buying on positive trading if they come up through the TI. And Netflix, Netflix also opened lower. No, it didn't. I lied. Did a little kicker type signal. Uh, J hook type pattern. First target's going back to the top of the trend channel. Then wouldn't uh, be surprised to see it stay right in that trend channel trajectory for a while. Free. Free, I uh, wouldn't be in this one right now. That, that uh, bearish belt hold told us that you wanted to be back out of this trade. AFFX, stay long as long as this stays above the T-line. EW. EW has broken out through this uh, channel, then used it, looks like a little bit of support. Uh, stay long, especially once it gets up to the 200, then watch what it does. BTU. Ah. S. Dot. B. T. U. All right, that's coming up nicely. I would suspect that it's going to go to the 200, which would be just about the same trajectory as uh, the tops over here. And WFC. Uh, stay long as long as this stays above the T-line. You had the doji gap up. You had kind of a belt hold. Tells you the sellers are out of this one. Uh, should move higher. J.P. Morgan. Uh, wouldn't be long or short this one right now. This one's got a wedge formation setting up. We did Facebook. We did our EGN. Wow, oh, tons more after the no more thickers oracle. Uh, this one, all you can do is stay long, but you definitely want to see this get through up through the, uh, the 200. Uh, ADSK, if this opens positive, um, you want to be a buyer. The Jacob pattern in, in progress also. RAVN. Uh, this one, if it opens positive, you want to be uh, long, anticipating that you're going to be moving back up to the top of the trend channel, which will give you a good trade. And GNC. GNC, uh, kind of sluggish in here. You're in an uptrend, but I would at this point rather buy it once it broke out through this level just to show that we got through the congestion area. Uh, let's see. We did MBG Infa. Infa, another one that wouldn't be long or short right now. Well, I might be short. If this opens lower and starts coming back down, especially if it comes back down through today's low, Occidental, uh, all you can do here is stay long. And into Evolve, do we do Evolve already? Evolve, stay long, nice uh, little rounding bottom. And CGIX. Uh, this one you can buy on a positive open tomorrow, setting up the little scoop J-hook pattern. Is that an IEZ? Uh, that one's not coming up. If that was an IEG, we did SanDisk. Uh, this one you can be buying, but observe the obvious. There's a lot of resistance right here. If you bought it and it fails again at the 200, get out of it right away. Getting in a trade seems to be easy. 
Can you talk about getting out? Yes, Robert, we'll, uh, I mean, here's kind of the obvious that if you bought down here in a state above the T line, you're in the overbought condition and they start moving big. This is where up on this day, when they touch the 200, that's when I'd go to my 10 minute chart because number one, I know they're stretched way out to the upside. Now I just want to see when the 10 minute chart's going to turn around and we'll do a session on that on when to take profits. For the stocks that you think will go up strong, how far out should we be buying options? Right now, how far away are we from option expiration? Oh, it's this week. Yeah, I would be right now going after the November options. Won't headline news spoil the patterns? Uh, not necessarily, Josh, uh, unless there's a severe change of investor sentiment. Now, even on a pattern, like a scoop pattern, that's developing in spite of what the market might might be doing. In this case, the market is good, but there's a scoop pattern. And any of the uh, ones that are uh, uh, doing the fry pan bottoms, uh, which... Uh, market, uh, the market's been strong here, but notice coming out of this fry pan bottom, you're going to get excessive strength in, in spite of which direction the market goes each way. How might changes in volume confirm a J-hook or a scoop? Not really. Uh, remember, we're not buying volume, we're buying price. So the only time I'm concerned about volume is when there's too little volume to trade the stock. And or if we see a big volume day on a like a breakout, that tells you a lot of people are buying on that day. Um, but once again, I kind of illustrate that a lot of people say, well, I want to see the volume go up as the price goes up. Volume and price have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Very simply stated, if there's nobody willing to sell and people are willing to buy, that price can go up on very low volume because there's nobody selling. So... Uh, and the only time I use volume as a uh, indicator is on a big volume day, like at a reversal day. If you have a big volume day and a reversal, that basically tells you there's been a lot of stock that were changing hands that day. And usually it's the uh, weak selling to the uh, strong or in the top where the exuberant are uh, uh, buying into the smart money. Is anybody having site issues? Ooh. Oh, the site was uh, offline here for a while today. I guess they're doing some repairs or something. Uh, no, I wonder if that's an Internet problem tonight. A little bit during the day, our cable uh, in this area shut down, so I don't know if... Um, Okay, what is the green line? The green line is the uh, three exponential moving average, or the 3T. And in the case where you've got uh, the 3T moving away from the T line, you start using the 3T, because if they came back and closed below the 3T, they're probably coming back to test the T line. That white M. ATR at highest value in past 10 bars yeah, on 20 minute chart see, for right? YM. I N. S Y. Oh, I guess not. This one, if it, oh, if this one opens lower tomorrow, you want to to be short. And S Q N S, same scenario here, except it's below two dollars, so you can't short it. Notice the tweezer top. That's a little indication that that was the resistance level. Right now, I would not be in this position until you see a buy signal to close back up above the T-line. CHTP. Uh, another one that you could be buying if it comes up through the uh, 50 tomorrow because that tells you they're confirming this gap up and they're breaking this downtrending uh, resistance level. And five... 
a little belt hold type signal, another one that you can be buying. Just be careful you're not being caught in a wedge here. So if I was buying, I'd definitely watch to see what it does once it got to that level. Uh, uh, when you say positive trading, what do you look for in what time interval? We're not waking up tomorrow in the pre-market futures like they were today, down 130 points. I want to see if the market is still going in the direction that I thought it should be going with either if the pre-market futures are negative, they're only slightly negative, or they're flat or positive, telling us that the uh, trend, there hasn't been something to change the trend. If we see the market down 140 points, that's still an indication the sellers are in there pretty strong. Um, Let's see, I think we did, oh, we didn't do US Steel. US Steel is in an uptrend, you stay with it until you see a sell signal. TEX, TEX, I probably wouldn't buy this one until it came back up through the uh, 3550 range. And, still no sound. Don, I don't know what to tell you there. It must be internet problem somewhere. Um, but doesn't matter. You can't hear me. Uh, this one, you want to go short on any weakness tomorrow. Remember, the bigger the signal, the more compelling that there's been a change of investor sentiment. Uh, when do you use the eight, the T line? All the time. If I'm looking to buy, I don't want to buy anything that's still trading below the T line. I want to see a, a candlestick buy signal and a uh, close above the uh, T line. Uh, MU, nothing here, not a reversal signal, just an update and a downtrend. I would suspect more downside. Yeah, I'd go short. I'd probably, if I was going to short this one, I'd probably use today's open. But if it came back down through there, it's time to go short. And here's a uh, big belt hold, bearish belt hold uh, type signal. Um, if this opened lower tomorrow and I owned it, I'd close out the position. What you really need to see is the profit was over today. The profit taking was over today. If it opens positive and starts trading positive, that means that gap up is still in effect. Are you buying any options later than November? No. Right now, we don't know what's going to happen uh, next week, let alone two months from now. So if I'm buying options, I want to be buying options where I know what is happening right now, and I want to buy the closest reasonable calls or uh Call spread. So if I see a chart like this, it looks like it's got good upside potential. It's got good upside potential right now. So I want to buy November calls. I don't want to buy October because that's too close. So I'd be buying the November calls. If I thought that this one could move to, let's see, it moved six points. If this could move to, let's say, 25, I might look at selling the 25s and buying the 20s or something. Maybe buying an eight, uh, 1750, selling a 2250. Okay, I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, sorry about you folks having some uh, connection problems. I'm afraid that's probably the uh, the internet. Uh, tomorrow, uh, a couple that really kind of stood out for me tonight was DYAX. I think if that opens positive tomorrow after today's left-right combo, uh, that's going to be a good-looking one. And JCOM tells me this fry pan bottom, especially coming out of this morning star signal off the, uh, the 50, breaking out could put us into wave three. Okay, with that, uh, everybody have a good evening. We'll see you in the chat rooms tomorrow. Have a good evening, everybody. And thank you for wearing your steel shirts tonight. That was nice of you.